Hey guys, this is Donna Sharp. Welcome back. This is day 493 of me doing these lives. I'm very excited. Just a continuation of speaking with you all about how to create uh, strong families and foster a great relationship with your children. Uh, I've been speaking on this now for about, oh man, it's going on three weeks. And I do pray by now you actually have gotten some good takeaway from all of this process, right? So as I mentioned, when, when I do the lives, it's super important that the things that I speak on, you actually place it in practice because if you're listening and you're saying, wow, that's great, I really enjoyed Donna's live, but you're not necessarily uh, placing those things into deep thought to figure out how you can actually associate it with exactly what you guys are doing right now. You have normal routines, but you want to intertwine all of the information that you've learned so that later on when you look back, you can say, you know what? I see where this made a difference based on what we did before. It didn't seem like we had a good flow, but now that we're doing this, it, the flow has gotten easier. So that's just an example. So whatever, whatever, uh, this, whatever way this benefits you, it's perfectly fine by me. Uh, this, is, this is not something I'm mandating that you guys do. It's all a way of sharing additional information because sometimes other people may have a different way of looking at things. And when you listen to their insights, you, you get this, this uh, awakening moment and it says, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about that, but I can try it now and see how well that works. So what I'm going to do today is speak to you. I spoke with you guys yesterday about three sections that I'm going to be focusing on. And uh, I spoke on one of them yesterday. All right. And learning to spend money wisely budgeting, budgeting and checkbooks, right? Buying your own clothes, budgeting and checkbooks. So we spoke about buying your own clothes yesterday. Now remember, this pertains to the children. So it's teaching them how to buy the right clothes and how to set aside the money that they need for that. So we spoke on that yesterday. So today what I'm speaking on is checkbooks. Checkbooks, a lot of you guys are probably already familiar with this, but this is mainly so that your child can understand how they can make this an addition to what they're doing if they're not, if you're doing something already or a lot of them have questions. They're wondering, checkbook, hmm, what, what is that all about? How do you balance a book? What's, what's involved in the process? So I'm going to give you a little bit of tidbit on that today, just a little insight. So now that you have added, uh, you, you talked about the budget, you're going to be adding checkbooks, all right? So now that you actually have added the family bank interest and budget, we spoke on the family bank, right? Having that bank at home. Hi, Damon. Uh, the bank and we also spoke on interest and how interest actually occur occurs occurs that's a Jamaican way of saying it <laughs> how interest actually accumulates right and we talk about the downfalls of interest we spoke on that we also spoke about budgeting right so now that you understand that here we are speaking about checkbook adding a checkbook makes uh, the process more fun again it's that tangible item that when they look at it they're gonna say wow, this is actually my book, I get to balance it, but guess what? The fun goes away when the balancing is not correct. So you wanna make sure that you show them the proper steps on how to care for that checkbook. And it's not just a checkbook, there's another piece that actually comes with it so that they can balance the book as they go along, right? So it makes, more, it makes the process more fun and instructional uh, for the child and much more easier for you because now they're managing it, even though you're speaking to them about it, you're walking them through the process where they're actually fulfilling those actions themselves, all right? So what is the process of the checkbook? Take the responsibility for keeping track of the child spending money um, out of their hands and put it into your hands, right? But it's going into their bank, the bank that you have at home for them. You don't wanna take their money and go spend it and do things for you on a parental side, right? You wanna leave their money exactly where it is so that when they come back, they can find their funds. But they're also tracking at the same time you are. So that way, when you go back, if they were ever to say, well, I had $50 in here, what happened to the 10? There's a tracking system there. So you can always follow back up and with them and explain to them where their bank is currently and what it looks like, all right? And what they have available the next time they come to purchase something. So the next step is how does your child use a checkbook? And here are a couple of steps on how they would use that checkbook. First of all, uh, you find the one, you find one of your old checkbook and your, and your registry cover. You guys know that you probably have, after you've written all your checks, you place all of these checkbook and registers in a drawer because maybe you're using it for your tax purposes later on, or maybe you're just using it as a reference, 
or sometimes you're archiving certain things because you have some purchases that you've made you want to follow up on, right? So get an old checkbook and a cover register. The second thing is uh, show the child how to use the checkbook and register to keep track of how much money he or she has. Again, that's a great way of tallying everything and just going down that checkbook to see, well, here's the here's what's happening. Here's the transaction. Here here is that history, right? It's it's beautiful to see that up front. And also show the third thing is show them how to take the money in and out of the bank by writing a check and how to put the money in by using a deposit slip. So the same goes when you guys go to the bank and you have to take out some money. You want to make sure you show them. Well, listen, I have a hundred dollars here. I'm going to write a uh, deposit slip to deposit in the bank. Remember, you don't want them withdrawing so much. And remember, the deposit account is something totally separate than the withdrawal account. The deposit account is the one that you don't want them removing from because as we spoke about yesterday, that's the one that's particularly there for any kind of savings, any kind of tithing, any kind of investments. We spoke about that yesterday. So that's super important that you get them in a the habit that once they pull that money off the top and they're now tithing, or they're now you know, setting that money aside for some form of investment, you let them know you're not gonna touch that because that's some, that has to come along later, later on, right? So you work with the money that you're depositing in your bank account outside of that 10%. And then the fourth thing is deposit needs to be initiated in the child's check register by the parent. All right, it needs to be initiated in the child's check register by the parent. Now, if they're able to write and do it themselves, get them to do it, but you have to oversee it and watch them. And um, if they're on younger, age eight or so, then that's gonna be a little bit different. But you still monitor the process because you wanna make sure that they understand the process that it takes to get this done, right? You can't just blink your eye and it automatically happens. So what are you doing? Um, is, what are you doing is uh, turning more initiative over to them, to, him, to he, him, or, him or her. As I mentioned, when you get them to do it and they're in the grind and they're doing this themselves, they're gonna appreciate you more because again, they're experiencing it firsthand themselves. And he is also he or she is also now in a better position to make purchase decisions and to build, to save for the things that they want and the things that they need, okay? So each week at payday, give them whatever money that they have earned either in cash or initiated in credit in their check register. So remember, they have the whole PEG system that we spoke about, uh, which is a company by payday. And so when they're getting that, then that's where the process comes here as far as making sure that you're logging that accordingly and having them logging it accordingly as well. So they can put their 10%, as I mentioned earlier, uh, that they want to save in your investment savings account and put in the cash or uh, write in a check to the family bank. So there's there's separate process here. Make sure that you make it painfully clear to them that the savings is a whole different section than the withdrawals because they're going to see things that they like and automatically their mind is going to go crazy especially if they get a nice big check they're going to wonder oh my gosh i can get this i can get this i can get this and then they're they're not paying attention to the need the the, the needs right they're looking more at the wants and they have to understand like we spoke about several days ago about the delayed gratification because that's going to help them through this process right so now you have two accounts. You have a checking account, and they can control and keep tally of this in their family bank, which is the bank that you have at home. You remember we spoke about the family bank, and that's basically a box, right, with a, a slit in the top and a nice prettiness on the outside, giving them that association with the actual bank. It's not a bank that they're going to be taking them to because, remember, sometimes they may be the age of eight and up, and if they're older, of course, you might want to take the actual, the actual bank route and still follow through with them on that. So as I mentioned, you know, even though I'm speaking about the banking process as it pertains to the child, it's, it's kind of crazy because there's really adults right now that still can't even understand that process. So as, as elementary as this may seem, I'm gonna encourage you, if, if this, was one, of, this is one, was one of your downfalls, uh, and now you're trying to identify with how this all works, how it all fits in, especially during COVID and you're trying to get your life together and you're figuring out, you know what, before COVID, I didn't have my finances together. Then now was the time to go back and get back to the basics. The basics may seem really basic, but guess what? It may be something that you were in need of help with as an adult, okay? And then the second thing is you have the checking account, as I just mentioned. And the second thing is an investment savings account, which a parent actually keeps tally of in the family bank. 
So whatever it is that they're saving, you're keeping tally of it, but you wanna make sure that the child is in the process so that they know what the activities are that's transpiring between their accounts, all right? So the child receives an incentive if, listen to this, uh, they can receive an incentive from moving their money from their family check into their investment savings, which pays a higher interest and bonus. So if they have money now in their regular account and they say, you know what, mommy, I don't really want to buy anything today. I'm going to save my money. They can actually move it from their regular bank account at home and move it out of the bank, the family bank, and then move it into the investment because now they're only adding additional benefits for their savings, investment, tithing, and everything else, which is great. So hi baby girl i miss you guys i love you <laughs> thank you thank you debbie thank you you know i just got to push through god is working through me as a conduit and this is what i'm being served i'm being asked to do by the spirit and i'm just following i'm being obedient to the lord so thank you for joining i really appreciate that this entire three weeks i've been speaking on i don't know if you've seen them but on how to create a strong family by establishing a relationship with your children and how to teach them the effectiveness of managing their money, managing their checkbook, their budgeting, their PEC system, responsibilities at home and how that pays off. So just that was just a quick summary just to include you on what we're talking about so it doesn't seem foreign to you today. So um, that's pretty much it. Now what I want to do before I close is I'd like to read, you know I like to read these stories with you because what it does, it plays things in perspective because sometimes when individuals speak on something, and you look at them and you go and you say, oh, that's great, and you leave. I'll give you a good example. You go to a seminar, a workshop, a conference, and you get all this great information, and you're, you're on high when you leave, right? You're on this magic high. You're like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to initiate these things. I'm going to put it in practice. And then you get back home, and you start to share it with your family members or friends, and they dwindle it right back down because guess what? They weren't in the room when you were there, right? So they didn't feel that excitement and that energy that you felt. And the second thing is, if you're taking a whole bunch of notes, guess what? Probably 80% of people take all the notes, but they don't go back home, transcribe it, get it in their subconscious and dissect it and say, you know what? Let me see what the 10 most important things or the three most important things I, I took away from that conference. And so what happens is those notes, it goes and it sits in a, in a chest, right? A chest of drawer or the kitchen, kitchen miscellaneous drawer or the file cabinet. And then you go back and you say, oh my goodness, remember that great training and conference I went to? I can't even remember what they talked about. Because what happens? You're not regurgitating that information back and renewing exactly what you learned. You're stuck it in a draw because you didn't put any of it in action. So regardless of what you learn, regardless of what you're hearing, I, you know, I keep explaining to people that you can hear me all day long. You can hear anyone else in your circle all day long. You can hear a minister preach all day long, but when you go home and you don't look up those scriptures for yourself and really study the word and make sure that it's resonating in your spirit the correct way with your study Bible, then to you it's going to be a bunch of words or to you it's going to be very, what should I say? If you're not careful, you won't understand the Bible properly. So when you read it, it's going to seem very foreign to you unless you break it down into kindergarten terms. Put it in perspective in your daily life. Identify it with what it is that you're going through right now. And when you put that one thing in action, then you move on to the next scripture. So you have to put these things in action. So what I'm going to do is read this little story to you. And it's just a story about this section that we're speaking about tonight on checkbook, right? And it says, uh, uh, we have never kept much cash in our family bank, thinking uh, thinking, thinking our, it must be thinking, no, thinking our, ourselves a little like the Federal Reserves, ready to put cash in, in it if a client, which is a child, wants to make a withdrawal. There's usually a little cash in the bank along with kids, slips the saving account book, and sometimes, sometimes things the children have to put there for, for safekeeping, such as their baby teeth, or old scout badges. You guys remember that? Or the, the locks of hair or things that you put in your keepsake box when you had your child, right? Once, uh, while we were on a short family vacation, burglars broke into our house. Apparently they were interested in only cash because while they went through everything, they didn't take any electronics or rugs or even jewelry. The lock 
was broken off the family bank and the few dollars that had been in it were gone. After the shock of seeing the disheveled house wore off a little, we saw a glimmer of humor trying to imagine the burglars looking everywhere for cash, then finding a box with a big lock on it and First National Bank of Your, Your Realm carved into it. They must have thought they'd finally found the jackpot in this apparently moneyless house. We imagined them grabbing the bank, breaking the lock off it, opening it up, and finding baby teeth, scout badges, and a little slip of paper covered with numbers in the kid's handwriting. So there you have it, guys. That's the story to, final, to finish off this section on checkbooks. I do pray that you have a little bit better understanding of how to take this information now, sit down with your children, get them to understand checkbooks. You know, sometimes the smallest things that we take for granted, when you look back year, when you look years back and your child look at you and they say, mommy, so what is a register? What, how do you withdraw and deposit? And then that's when it hits you and you say to yourself, man, I didn't even realize I didn't even spend some quality time going through that. They hear about it, but you didn't actually walk them through the process. And remember, schools are not going to show them every single thing that they need to understand when it comes to the, the actual living, the life, the life that we physically go through, right? They're not going to use a, a trigonometry equation or a chemistry equation understanding how to balance your checkbook. So let's get the, the simple things of life that we know that they're going to use later on and they're going to benefit from and placing it in practice, giving them at least an opening knowledge of it so that when they get started, at least they can just jog back about five years and say, you know what, I remember when mommy and daddy was sitting me down and they start to talk to me about checkbook, the register, how to balance it, and the reason for budgeting. And it just serves them so much purpose later on. Because guess what? You wanna be the one teaching your children because Number one, the teachers have a lot on their hands. And number two, you want it coming from you. That's something that they're gonna treasure for the rest of their life. Have it come from you. Don't have a stranger teach your children the essential things that they need to learn, all right? So that's all I had for you today. I'm gonna to speak to you on the third section to, uh, that I spoke on. I said yesterday was on how to purchase your own clothing for the children. And today I spoke on budget and then uh, the third section. What is the third section? Let me just find the third section here. Bear with me a minute. Anyway, whatever the third section is, we're speaking on that tomorrow. Adjustment for age. Adjustment for age. But there's one last thing I want to share with you. And there's three steps here, three suggestions I want to share with you. The first one is encourage your kids to anticipate their needs for the week and keep or take out some cash. That's number one. Number two, have a, a slot in the top of your locked family, family bank so that the child can make a deposit. So you don't want to lock up the box so they can't make deposit because that defeats the purpose. They're going to get frustrated. Keep it very simple. And then the last thing is encourage kids to take good care of their checkbooks and to have a special place to keep them since this is what shows how much they have in their accounts. So there you have it, have it guys. Tomorrow I'll speak with you guys on adjustments for age and uh, we'll just move forward but we're progressing straight through this book i do pray that you've gotten a lot of value from it a lot of good english in that music <laughs> i pray that this was very valuable to you we're just moving right ahead and again I've, I've been speaking from the book three steps to a strong family by linda and richard airy and it's also forwarded by stephen covey you guys are very familiar with stephen covey great Stephen Covey is very um, methodical when it comes to planning and scheduling so if you haven't had a chance to look up those items go back and check it out all right so uh, I will be back again tomorrow share this live with someone else in your circle with who has children or grandchildren or nieces and nephews or maybe there's some grown adults like I said that don't understand how to budget and how to balance their checkbook uh, but besides that love the live if you like if you love it and comment because that's the only way I can see your feedback. We can't have a dialogue here. Uh, if you watch this live and tuned in later on, please type replay and also place your comments after you've watched the entire live. All right, remember, we get very impatient sometimes. We log in for 30 seconds and jump off, but sometimes you may miss the most meaty information at the end. So be patient, 
Make sure you're staying safe out there. If you'd like to learn more about me, log on to holisticwellbeing.com. That's spelled with a W, W H O L E L I S T I C, wellbeing.com. And aside from that, I bid you guys a fantastic rest of your Tuesday. And I'll see you back here again tomorrow. Debbie, it's so wonderful to see you. God bless you. I love you guys. I'm laughing all the time with your TikToks. That's how I brighten my day. So thank you. And Damon, thank you so much for joining. I'll see you guys back again here tomorrow. Have a fantastic evening. Ciao.